out as well. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. The difference between suggestive and outright disgusting. Okay, we're back. Hi. Hi. All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. So, um, Sisseroth, what do you want to do? Um, making sure I'm right. What was what was the dragon's name again? Grim. Uh, Grimmaw. Grimmaw. Okay, I was right. I was right. I am going to very, you know, chest puffed out, sword drawn in hand, and just start yelling at these kobolds in Draconic, saying that they got Grimwall killed and it's all their fault. And I'm going oh. to try to be as intimidating. Oh, so you're as guilt possible. tripping them. Gotcha. That, oh, that shit. They have failed. Oh my God. Their one job as servants to oh a dragon, God. and they can't even do this <laughs> sorry task. All right, <laughs> roll me intimidation as you come around the corner, Sisroth, and through the threshold of this cave, you begin giving this long speech of how they failed their master, of how they failed uh, him, and because of them, he's dead. Uh, Biscuit is pointing at you with that severed arm. Meanwhile, Egg has come out of the refuse pile with a giant barrel that has a skull and crossbones on it oh. with a large wick out the top of it. Oh. And, like, he, it's the barrel's like 10 times bigger than he is, but he lifts it out and, like, pushes it out and is near the wick. So, looking forward. After I give my speech, words are done, I would like to use my new transformation ability. You don't have that yet until okay, a long okay. rest. Okay. 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 Interesting. Uh, that's a 22 on intimidation. Okay. That's some will saves for these little guys. <laughs> okay. And... Okay. A save to not pest those cells. <laughs> <laughs> As you come out here with your big rawr, I'm a dragon verbose voice. <laughs> oh no. If they see the entire party, they're gonna be I dumb mean, enough to think Phileas is completely like un uh like uh completely, you know overpowerable. <laughs> um First thing you notice, son. Okay. Uh, a sister off. A sister off. Is the one named Biscuit on top of this other refuge pile immediately drops the arm at just a lock of shock and horror encapsulating their face as he kind of just says, uh, uh, uh. The other one named Egg, kind of looking at you from behind the barrel, hides a little bit behind, and you hear this. <laughs> <laughs> so one's just standing extremely like shell shocked. The other one is slowly having like this oh breakdown sobbing. Oh, that's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> Continue as you are. Mr. Stroth, what did you say to them? <laughs> I dealt with the issue at hand. Um, Tell them to leave. Egg oh. looks up to Biscay. He's like, We don't. <laughs> he takes the wick. No. And begins rolling the barrel towards Biscuit. And oh. in one hand, he takes like a bit of timber and reaches over and lights it. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, uh, press the digitation stuff out that flame. Don't be stupid. Press the digitation <laughs> stuff out <on> fire. <laughs> you can do a puff of wind, so Just... if it's a small one. <laughs> uh, Cody, how far are they away? They're about 50 feet away. Okay, guys, I did bad cop. Uh, Someone else can be can, good. Can Ray I, of can Frost. I shoot, can I shoot an arrow at the wick? <laughs> uh, I was going to say Ray of Frost you gonna, on the wick. You're aiming at the, the, the wick. It's <laughs> a tiny, a, tiny wick. A, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's... to be fair, Preston's digitation would actually dock out the light, so. Uh, I mean, Preston's digitation, a gust of wind comes out and knocks the fire out of the the torch that, the makeshift torch he made. 
Um, what else is everybody else doing? I, I was going to say Ray of Frost on the barrel or the wick. Do y'all want me to try something else? I have well, other Ezra, ideas. I was just going to come join a Cisroth, um <laughs> and then immediately transform his arms into just the tusk claw-like figure and just say, I think you all just should just leave. Uh, okay. Uh, Felix, well, hey. um, roll your Ray of Frost, um, and we'll see if you hit. Could use a Ezra. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 20. <laughs> 20 to hit. Do we, though? All right. We're you in managed... another dragon slayer. And? A ray of frost emanates out from Felix's outstretched fingers. This, is like, this arctic icy energy flies out and hits the wicks and coating it in ice and kind of like backlashes shards. So it looks like, like the ice hit and then just little stalagmites of ice reflect off on the other end. As Egg looks down, looks back up, sees that Ezra is now wielding tusk-like oh. appendages out of their arms, immediately takes the barrel, rolls it over to, um, <laughs> rolls it over to Biscuit, and Biscuit looks down to Egg, looks up, we lived a good life. <laughs> One month longer than our brothers and sisters. Oh, we go out with a bang. Damn it! As Biscuit oh, no. jumps down off of his pile, opens his mouth as a crackle of fire begins to. It's very slow. It's like embers forming as he's oh aiming God. at the girl itself. <laughs> You demoralized them. <laughs> I I want to I want to yell at them to stop and listen. Do I need to roll again, or am I? What still are good? you saying? And make a persuasion check. Persuasion. Oh, I'm not as good as that. <laughs> you I'm couldn't... only good at being scared. Look, I'll, I'll <laughs> yell at them. <laughs> All right. So I want to yell at him to stop. Oh my, I don't. I was gonna say Actually? that they failed one dragon, but they can have a chance of redemption yeah. if they listen to us. Okay, go ahead and roll. Okay, uh, persuasion. <laughs> That's nowhere near as good. Is someone else uh, also helping? Because um, yes, uh, yes, 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 a hundred times it. yes. <laughs> All right, if Kyron's helping, roll with advantage. Oh my goodness! Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm not good at persuasion. I'm good at yelling. That's not much better. Um, thirteen. <laughs> Because you're trying to convince them not to off themselves. Okay. I, I get a plus six to intimidation, only a plus three to persuasion. Uh, they are speaking. They are speaking in common, right? Like I'm I've understanding what they're saying. You're speaking in draconic. I don't know what the fuck you're telling them. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm um, they are the speaking in like very broken common. Oh yeah. Um, oh, that's perfect then. Biscuit kind of looks over to you. The ember is dying down in his throat. You see tears actually streaking down his scaly face. A little bit of snot globbling over at his snout as he also began, you know, sobbing. Um, meanwhile, Biscuit just has his head buried next to the barrel, shaking his head, going, no, 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 no. Um, so it didn't work on him, but he doesn't have the means like his brother does. As Biscuit looks over, he's like, Really? <laughs> yes. is finally leaning his, his head around the corner to like watch <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to be dealing with suicidal couple yeah, I asked oh, intimidation y'all went with it so I'm playing bad cop no I didn't I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know <laughs> I gave them the chance to leave <laughs> oh, <look. laughs> 
instead of I might I suggest you take over before really? you, you you say asking really and I'm gonna say yes. You you also hear yeah. Egg saying, Oh I dragon little at us if we killed Grimma Well thankfully I'm not Grimoire and I might be more lenient. They pause for a second. Biscuit looks at me and he's like Yeah, not a dragon. Oh! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> he kind of just looking at you very confused. <laughs> we don't have any space in the freaking cart for them. That, he can still help us while we're in here. Who's going to know this place better than them two? Are you wanting to stumble upon a, ma a maze of someone else's lair? I don't think so. Proceed. You, you're a dragon in dragonborn form. Yeah, oh, right, right. Yeah, there we go. Good idea. That, that's what I'm going to tell him. Like, I might not look like one now, but do you really want to risk seeing me angered into having to change back right now after roll, you've already... Roll deception with advantage okay. given the situation. <laughs> Oh, oh, first roll, crit for 26. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> and the idea guy. <laughs> the two kobolds look at each other. A kind of just like <laughs> haphazardly takes like a bit of like this almost sooty cloth on the ground and just kind of just like quickly wipes his face. <laughs> Meanwhile, um... Biscuit has taken his hands and blew his nose into his hands, took a look, threw the gunk on the ground, <laughs> and immediately brushes the rest off of on, on his scaly haunches as he immediately turns towards you and just kind of, in a supplicant way, bows down with his head buried to the ground, hands splayed outward, joined at his side by Egg, as they both say in unison, Oh, great dragon! We promise we won't kill you! Ezra just looks back at the group and just shakes his head. Oh my god. I don't... No. Uh, I think I finally step out and just... <laughs> They, their, their, their heads are just currently yeah, about. They don't. They're not, they're not revert. raising up or anything. I was just gonna revert his changes. No, you're also going to give my friends here the same respect you give me. So understood. This kid kind of looks up, looks over the group, then eyes Phileas. Even snack snack. <laughs> <laughs> Even snack snack. Snack snack. <laughs> Call me a couple. <laughs> but fair, fair. Okay, that's, that's fair. They didn't call you a kobold. I they just questioned if you were a dragon. I no, him a no, the group did. The closest to a kobold, he said. No, I said like a sister rough, but smaller. <laughs> what? Uh. What's your name, oh mighty dragon? A Cicero. Oh mighty Cicero, how may we please you? I look to the rest of the group, see if yeah. anyone else speaks up, so I don't do all the talking. What? Uh, <laughs> hey, you're, the, you're the lead dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of just shove him in the shoulder. It's all you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is your idea. Grimo's hold is your hold down? Uh, yeah, yeah. How about you give us a tour of Grimoire's lair? Grimoire. Grimoire. Grimoire's lair, yeah. The uh, biscuit immediately stands up. Grimoire's no more! This is not a Sussurath's lair! Oh. Indeed it is. <laughs> Indeed it is. <laughs> he quickly runs up to you, hesitates for a second before approaching any further not wanting to overstep any bounds. <laughs> Meanwhile, Egg is kind of just like shuffling over on his knees, like still trying to keep as low as possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can approach. Have I never heard us approach before? <laughs> I know, I know. 
Maybe he's gonna eat us like the others. <laughs> he did eat our entire clutch, but he doesn't seem big enough to eat us right now. I uh, just be careful, Biscuit. I don't wanna be and we've lived for a month for the longest lived one of our clutch. I know, I know, egg. Ah, scared the Cicero. Let me show you to the treasury. Please don't eat us. You're safe. Oh my for god. Now. The longest lived. Wow. <laughs> you you must be the wisest of kobolds. You you see Biscuit kind of just smile a little bit. He kind of puts his hands on his hips and puffs out his chest just a little bit. Yes. Biscuit is the best of the clutch. Not eaten first. Eaten last. Wow. Egg here just hatched last. <laughs> wow. Impressive. They don't even look like they're worth a snack. <laughs> I... Did we just... <laughs> yes. Yes, we did. Did we just get just a pair of on. toddlers? <laughs> Let's just move on. Let's finish this, please. We have place to be. <laughs> Come, we show you, we show you the hard. As they lead you down one of the tunnels that goes a little bit deeper in, but not too much. It, it's a bit of an expansive cavern that they show you next. And it's not lit, but these kobolds do light like little braziers that they've haphazardly made out of stone and twigs and just all sorts of rubble. Uh, I bring up? the dancing lights as well. Sort of shoot my head. Oh, Snack Snack knows Jim and Jim. He knows me Jim and Jim. He knows me Jim and Jim. Yeah, I know me Jim and Jim. What in the hell are they speaking? Me Jim and Jim. Grandma no, no. never did the me Jim and Jim, but we've seen people fight Grandma that did me Jim and Jim. <laughs> Grandma never, never got hurt from him, though. <laughs> so inside this cavern, as the globules of light enter in, you notice a vast oh, amount of an assortment of coins... Oh. Uh, mixed in with like large cases, gilded chests. So, allow me to uh, give you what you have found in terms of playable stuff. Okay. You find. I will write this all down. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're a mouse treasurer. I, I, I am the item guy. I have the party funds in my thing, but that's all I have. Okay. You find 6,525 copper pieces. A lot of copper. Yeah. 1,426 silver pieces. Yeah. 1,150 gold pieces. You find in several small pouches, all with the same little, like, insignia on it, that, Felix, you recognize this insignia as House Octavia. Um, 500 platinum pieces. Right. Uh, can Felix, like, can he, like, stealthily, like, put that in his pocket, like... No. If you want to roll sleight of hand to pocket it. Dude, that is 5,000 no. uh, gold. <laughs> okay, I'm going to screenshot this. Did oh, you finally get a crit? <laughs> you crit. have to give me the total. Crit succeed or crit fail? <laughs> crit succeed at 23. Nice. That goes above Chiron's perception, so you, you stealthily pocket does my the minions see them? Five? No, no, <laughs> they do not see. <laughs> they the second... pocket. You pocket the five satchels, which have a hundred platinum pieces individually, into your own pack. Yeah, the second that Felix sees 
uh, the uh, house Octavia symbol is like, yeah, no. <laughs> this is going back to who it belongs to. Right. There are several gilded chests and one glass case. Um, in the gilded chest, Phileas, as you open it up, it's, it's a, a handheld chest. Mm -hmm. No locks or anything. It's very ornately made little filigrees and everything on the etching of the chest in like gold leaf and everything the chest itself is made out of some sort of steel you open it up and inside is a small cold blue gem oh. that seems to emanate with frost of some arcane nature Ooh. this as you look at it you could maybe use this to enhance one of your weaponry to change the element that it uses. Oh. If Elise is just holding the gem in his gloved hand, sort of I, eyeing it It's up. not unbearably cold to touch, but you feel like the... It's like having a bit of snow in the summer's day in your hand. It's not unbearably cold, but mm. it's like that... You see the 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 um, steam roll off of it as it immense emits this cold aura. Gem of cold. I can't remember. Did Quill come with us? He no. Who was at the car? Okay. okay. Irving did. Oh, okay. He's kept back this entire time, going, "What the fuck?" <laughs> just, just let the group do its thing. We're weird. <laughs> I figured uh, Quilltip's um, mind was being exploded by all the shinies. And I also made a uh, miscalculation in regards to what I'm about to say. Uh, so I'm going to fix that now. Uh -huh. Ezra, in the glass case, there is a particular magically preserved flower. It looks like a rose, except the petals aren't red or white. You... Not only the colors that you've seen before. They're like a sandy, dusty brown, almost. And given the descriptions you were given in the laboratory, this is known as the Desert's Jewel. A rare mm. rose that once every five years blooms from a underground cactus that comes up once to bloom and then buries itself back into the sand. Uh -oh. This is one of the items you need to create your potion. Now, I misspoke last time. You don't need to find six. You need to find four. And you can make a potion individually from each ingredient. Once you take all four, it should stabilize you with every consecutive one making you stronger and more stable. Hmm. Well, Ezra's going to snatch this. <laughs> um, in order to make this, you need either to return back to the lab or have about 500 gold pieces worth of labor labor laboratory and alchemical equipment reagents in order to create this, which you don't have on hand right now. Yes, he's going to store it. Okay. But you do have an alchemist. I do apologize. <laughs> it hit me again. I need to go use the bathroom again. Okay, Cody. Oh, uh, I still, there's still more treasure. There's yeah. still more treasure. But I'll be right back. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go refill my water. You do, do that. I'm excited. This is something uh, Cody had. Cody and I both had the idea. Um, but when I brought it up to Cody, he he said, "Oh yeah, I I really thought about that. Um, <laughs> the idea uh, to change my cannon's flamethrower into a uh, into a multi elemental." Uh, that would thing. that is cool. Uh, yeah, so something... now I've got a frost launcher. Something I don't know if you've already thought of, Phileas. Yes. It seems like it sounded like someone was pointing a gun at us that we could have now, maybe. So if you want another No no, it's it's a barrel. It's an explosive barrel of probably gunpowder. <laughs> yeah. Uh I don't know about that. Uh, we can bring it with us, but that is a volatile thing. <laughs> But also, do we want pets? No. 
I don't think I mean, you want a cobalt companion? Ha like, having some servants we... would be Yes, it decent. would be nice. Maybe you can send a message to have them picked up. I know they, they're, they're short-lived, but... But how do we send a message while we're traveling? And like, I mean, well, so kobolds actually can... They can live, like, as long as humans. Just because of their actions, they typically don't. Oh, right, yeah. Because <laughs> a kobold's a kobold. <laughs> I don't think it's feasible to bring them with us. They will cause too much trouble. Uh, plus, it's more mouths to feed. Plus, they probably don't, won't like it. Uh, but I mean, they are serving like a dragon. It. They will like us better than uh, Grandma. So. True, true. We are not going to be babysitting Kobold. However... I have an idea. I don't think people will like it that need to like it. <laughs> I mean, it, I think it's entirely up to a Ciceroth, though. He is their dragon. Well, what I was saying mm. is, if uh, we needed servants for a closed-up, sealed lair that we may or may not have already, Ezra... That's what the rope... That's what the automatons are for. We're gonna have living people down there. <laughs> we already <laughs> have... Security. <laughs> well, we we can have multiple layers. This, I, 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 what, I what may if, or may not have called them pets. <laughs> we, we can have multiple layers. Uh, uh, we, we can. Then we have to feed though. We don't have to feed the. Tunnel. I will manage the feed. If they're my pets, then I'll take care of them. <laughs> oh my god! I'm sure they will find a way. They're kobolds after all. Yeah. What if they break something down there? What if we just take they're all the stuff and... I don't think they're that good. <laughs> what if? What if? They don't touch we, something they're not supposed to? We take the stuff, and then we turn around to them and be like, This is your land now. Make of it the greatest Kobo Den of all time. I will oh come to visit you every now and well, then, and you, you better be impressed. You're going to have to convince to give them permission so they don't immediately die to the robots. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, good luck. <laughs> We're not sending them to a, Dwight's a world. guide. So we, because Dragon Lair is in mazes. And I just got us a guide, I got us out of a fight, and you won't even let me keep two pets. You really. almost made them blow themselves up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> told you I'm a scary dragon. Yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah, I, think, I, I think didn't want to make here. them suicidal. <laughs> I would have been look, really look. sad. You have to lead with a firm hand. Okay, so how much is 6,000 copper? You know, what adult red dragon has copper in their fucking... Yeah, that's... that's... What, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, wow, I kind of want to tell the kobolds their previous master sucks. Uh, <laughs> copper <laughs> in gold five. Uh, I, I, I do have to ask, Quite. how do you guys feel that Felix was able to oh, steal... God. You need 500 copper for a gold piece. Oh, you stole from the great dragon a Cicero Slayer. And... A, a technically, <laughs> technically I Grimma stole. Anything, stole... I just it. Okay, so that amount of copper <laughs> equates to six, 65 gold. Yeah, it's not very much. Two silver Grip. and five copper. Imagine stealing. I just grabbed the flower but, and just took it as well. But that's a lot of copper, so maybe you can use it for smithing purposes? <laughs> Uh, 1,426 silver. Yes, so, does no one want them? Like, is that the group GP. consensus? Wait, I don't think Wait. we're bringing them with us. Felix won't care if we bring him with them or not. Like, no, not even, like, a right I now don't... thing, but, like, a campaign thing. I would like to have the kobolds as friends. Yeah. I want them as friends. I don't want them as, like, Constant companions. No, that's what I was thinking. We send them back or something. So. Well, I think we should the layer. Keeping them in the layer would be the best option. Then. But I don't think we're coming back to the layer. We can. It's like a month. What was it? Nine days to get here. That was the worst case scenario. We that took literally the, the worst case. scenario every technically, time. Yeah, technically it's like five to seven days. What if? Okay, what if this is your thing, this is rough. You, you get a lair. It's in. <laughs> it's in a nice location. It's scenic. Yeah. You'd be oh. able to fly there easily. Yeah, sure. Oh my goodness. This is your lair. These are your kobolds. You just check in with them once in a while. It's gonna. Die. When is the next time I'm gonna have downtime enough to come back and you, check on them? We don't know. I would like to remind y'all 
Yes. Normally, it would have taken us th about two and a half, three days to get here. It's That's still in best days. Condition. Days, yeah. Yes, but however, he will be able to transform into a dragon at some point. <sighs> not yet. And the not the idea know of. is that you put into their mind that you could show up at any point, mm -hmm. you know, like a manager check at a job. Yeah. Alright, so Hi, these I'm two... back. Hi. Hi, I got some Cody. ideas. I got ideas again. Uh, okay, um, so in total, everything apart from the platinum that Felix got, <laughs> uh, we got 1,575 gold, 8 silver, and 5 copper. If it's all pulled up and put into a, a like... Uh, Heroes a... of Dwight's Fall party fund. <laughs> <laughs> a Mark um, Fall party fund? Uh, we'll do the math later. Okay. But there's also a few other things that you find here. Yeah. Uh, Phileas, uh, you find a 60-foot uh, length of silk rope. Um, but with your arcane senses, you can tell that this thing's emitting a magical aura of it, Ooh. about it. Um, you'll have to spend time to, you know, examine and identify, identify it. Yeah. Um, so you also really... find in a small little ring box a silver ring with like waves etched into it with like little bits of lapis lazuli uh, set into it all around the entire ring. And again, this one too emits just the faintest aura of magic. Okay. Uh, anything more? That's it. Okay. That's their death side. It's a really long lasso of truth. Uh, the kobolds are looking at you guys, like, put these things into your bag of holding. They kind of look at each other like, Oh, so we're moving layers? <sighs> hey, I have an idea. It's not the best idea, but it's an idea. And if it prevents them from killing themselves, maybe it's for the best. But... Can always bring them to the academy. I mean, <laughs> what are we Guys gonna have them do at the academy? Me. Learn, take care. They'll be taken. Uh, they, they're care gonna of. be like the janitors of the. I was gonna I say, mean, they could very well be vermin, uh, vermin patrol. I'm, I'm, I'm game with it. I guess. Wait, that's I, really look. awkward for me to say. <laughs> what I just no, oh no, no, no Phyllis, are you okay there? Vermin control. The um. mouse says against the rats. <laughs> <laughs> so I that means we're gonna be traveling with us idea. right now. I no, mean, we can't. We can't fit them with us. We, we, we can't not. just say They're go small. explore the wild and hope to find. They the can city ride and on the academy. horses if they behave. Otherwise, they have to walk or run. I'm saying this is a bad idea, but okay, I'll go with it. All right. I'm, I'm going to tell them, yes, we're, we're changing layers. They kind of look at each other in this happy, like, expression. They're like, do place. I'm, yes. <laughs> He's having we need to get you some microphone settings set up, uh -huh. my guy. <laughs> if, if, so you, I want you to, I want you to be able to, like, belt out these voices I, I really do bad. I check just because I have to. No, I want to ask the kobolds if Grandma ever shed any scales while he was here or where he sleeps there's any scales, discarded scales laying around. We, we ate them. <laughs> <laughs> how how, oh, how, how do they taste? Out of sheer curiosity. Crunchy. <laughs> Like a texture, a flavor, okay. We were uh, hoping, you know, if we eat enough scales, that we could um, become dragon. Um, maybe one day. <gasps> <laughs> they kind of look at each other excitedly. <laughs> dream big, dream big. Yeah, dream big. I, I'm not gonna say don't give them false hope, but yeah, dream big. I want to be the terror of the sky, Biscuit! <laughs> <laughs> oh my 
A kind of just over there, and like, A kind of just over there going, I, I want to be one that can live underwater and be the, oh. the, the, the horde of the sea egg. Oh, oh, it's like Stop. asking a child what they want to be when they grow <laughs> up. They're only a month old. <laughs> they are toddlers and cobalt. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. in my setting, kobolds mature at two weeks. Yeah, oh. they, they, kobolds typically mature very quickly. Oh. Yeah, they leave their nest at like kind of six toddlers. years old because that's like them being a mature, fully grown adult and needs to be kicked out to adventure. <laughs> well. Uh. <laughs> right, so. That's everything that we found. Uh, that is everything. Aside from the giant explosive barrel that's still in the main cave. Yes. Because... Oh, Felix right. will take that. that. Where are you going to put it? Oh, my goodness. That doesn't <laughs> fit in the bag of holding, right? No, I was planning uh, on... So I the barrel little... is essentially a keg. Like, an actual, an actual keg barrel. So I could fit inside. Uh, it's a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, it's essentially a powder keg. And inside is this black, gritty, powdery substance. I mean, Felix will like press his nose against like the <laughs> barrel and smell it like. Hmm. I thought you were going to just snort it. <laughs> snort it. <laughs> I'm going to lick it. <laughs> oh no, now we got three kobolds. Okay. <laughs> no, no, he, he, he was probably seeing like what it was. Like, okay, okay uh, explosive Egg gunpowder. points at it and says, that's Boom Boom Barrel. Grandma said that that made Big Boom when these one people used it against him. He said it hurt a lot. And only to use that if people come into the cave and there was too many of them. Well, good Same. thing you didn't use it. Now you get to come to the new lair. New, you see, you start hearing them chanting, like, like hold hands, and they kind of go in a circle. <laughs> new lair, new lair, new lair, new lair. All right, this will this will be very useful. Agree. They, they're giving me the same energy as the Pichu brothers, but with oh. murderous intent. <laughs> All right, mm. as you guys leave out, you notice that they've picked up the arm and the leg, respectively, that they had left, and are just slowly munching on them as you guys leave out the cave. Oh. Like chicken? Like chicken. <laughs> What's chicken? <laughs> I'll get it for you. Honest, <laughs> listen, I'll line up work. They should not go biscuit hungry. Thinks, uh, biscuit thinks Grandma said this was gnome. Well, I guess it's no more. <laughs> you know, uh, I was not a character, but we should totally serve them some grandma flesh. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> oh no! That's a point. And they'll never know. <laughs> Grim technically, we're the... not getting them hooked on dragon flesh. Okay, your dragon friend is not letting them get hooked on dragon flesh. The <laughs> the parts of Grimmore are in. Supposedly in the bag of holding. Oh. So wait, uh, you wrote these down, didn't you? Uh, uh but, 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 some blacker. Yeah, I, I've written everything down so far. Okay. Uh, All right, so you guys got biscuit and egg. Send me the list, and I'll add it to the bag of holding. Okay. Level one. Oh, you know what we could do? I know they they may not be helpful to us, but <gasps> Bruno can have some assistance. I was thinking <laughs> quill tip, but <laughs> also if we use them as meat shields. No, I like yes. meat. Yes, I like meat too. <laughs> they would get right. to swing a hammer all day. <laughs> Come big and strong. 
eventually you guys make your way out of the cave um biscuit and egg taking up like a like a bone and they kind of nod at each other and they they're just carrying them and then just swinging them around like clubs so they have weapons now <laughs> um <laughs> improvised bone weapons um as you guys meanwhile irving is just got over there kind of rubbing the temple of his head forehead and going Oh, okay, okay. I'm just gonna walk over to her and be like, you gotta get used to it. And I'm gonna walk uh, over to him, no you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Melts As a little. <laughs> you guys approach the, the caravan, Quiltip takes notice of the two kobolds and he's like, oh, I see. <laughs> don't question it. Okay, please don't question it. I, I know it looks well, bad. But... I'm not questioning it, but this is going to be very interesting. So, who's the mother and father in this situation? <laughs> well, uh... points out of Sisseroth. <laughs> He's both. He's both. <laughs> That's very complicated. Okay. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> I, it's really funny. He almost got him to kill themselves. And like <laughs> Oh god. He probably got to use my In one month purposely. of their life, they lose their father, <laughs> they want to commit suicide, and then now they have Oh, a new don't forget parent. that their entire clutch was also eaten by that oh, same and father. They're murdered. Oh. Oh, oh my god. god. So you're giving, you're giving trauma to the NPC. <laughs> they don't think of it as trauma. This is normal for kobold culture. <laughs> and, and to be fair, this wasn't even Cody's trauma. It was more my trauma. I gave it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Limited. Perhaps I should look over your new pets. That sounds good. Pets. Sounds what do pets do? Loyal servants and protectors. They immediately go to Cicero's sides with their bones brought up. <laughs> They're like, Dragon Guard! Dragon Guard! <laughs> yes. I am going to need to drink this way. Rasta could never pay me enough to put up with us. Go ahead, Felix. Go ahead. Did we it's bring so... any alcohol? <laughs> you did not. <laughs> Not specifically. <laughs> not specifically, anyway. You did not bring any drink, but I have plentiful supplies. All right. So the day comes like to a close. <laughs> um, you all make camp for the night. The two kobolds of biscuit and egg helping in what they can. Not really helping, more like getting in the way. Um, <laughs> kind of running into things, trying to set and up tents. A little bit of the tent maybe catching on fire by accident by putting oh it too close God. to the campfire. Can I, um, can I work with them to help them learn? Is that something I'm able to do? Actually, if that's what you want to do for the night, that is completely <laughs> A-OK. That's, that's the point. Uh, Phileas uh, will also come on over with two freshly whittled wooden ones. And oh no, he's going to sit down, open up a, a book, and start teaching them prestidigitation. Oh, oh no. you monster! <laughs> <laughs> what it. are we doing? Um, Ezra is going to go to his he's, tent and lay down. He's trying to I'm distract gonna... them so they don't cause any more mischief. Uh, the moment uh, you give uh, them the little wooden wands and try to start teaching them, they m about maybe a, a quarter of the way through, they just start pointing the wands at each other, going, My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. They begin picking up like sand from the ground and throwing at each other. Pocket sand. <laughs> you know what? I, can't I, I do kind this. of lean over I and go, this. I'm Listen, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ezra's just in this tent covering oh his ears, just like, oh my god. You know, I'm going to cook that dragon meat, but they're all doing that. Uh, Biscuit at one point goes, my guy, like, opens up his, his maw. You see the embers like popping oh, no. out <laughs> as he spits out like a small, pitiful little flame. Go, and it does like it does. It's like a. It's like almost like someone took like uh you know the 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 wands people have been selling that does like the little fireball yeah. thing. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but smaller. 
<laughs> so, um, oh, let Vance go first, but I did want to ask something, Cody. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, go I'm ahead, just cooking meat. Oh, okay. um, what, what meat? The dragon meat? Yes, I'm cooking the dragon meat. <laughs> the moment you start cooking the dragon meat, the two kobolds immediately take the scent and come over to your side, and their mouths just start watering. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, they don't know what the meat is. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Felix, what's up? Our camp area, how large is it? I mean, you're on the edge of a mountain path, so it's it's fairly large. Kind of just like, you're there. Is it larger than a 20-foot cube? Yeah. Eh, here and there, depending on where people go. What are you trying to do? I was going to try and set up alarm. All right. I'll allow it. I can just All imagine right. giving the kobolds like the like the drumstick of a dragon legend. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a huge drum leg first of all. I know that'd be I funny though. Really <laughs> <laughs> I can't well, meat skewers right they just, uh, just start I'll gobbling it down. The horses Irving. <laughs> this oddly reminds This oddly reminds me of dad. I know. <laughs> they ate his scales. They might actually recognize. The Ezra's going to yell at Felix. Hey, Felix, when you're done, uh, come over here for a sec. Oh my God. Felix will nod, and after he's. <laughs> so there's an alarm within our camp area, just in case something happens. Right. Yes, that's bit What is it? Uh, Ezra's going to hand him that flower. I found this. Oh, what? What is this? You should know what it is because I gave you that listener. Yes, yeah, so this alarm is, is a thirty foot range, not twenty foot. Well, twenty foot cube. Sorry. Yes, it's twenty foot cube for me. Yeah. Uh, a list is one thing, but the description. Hmm. But I don't know if Cody wants me to roll anything or. I will say idea. you know what it is, given the descriptions that you were given from Ezra for the potions and everything. Oh, I see. This is one of the components. I will need the others. Three, five. How many were on the list? But with yeah, this, I should I, there's, be able There's three left. <laughs> with this, I should be able to concoct what you need. I will keep it safe. Thank you. During the oh, downtime, yeah. can I ritual cast identify with the two, the the, yes. the the silk rope and the silver ring? Sure. So the rope is a rope of climbing. Um, it is a thirty foot length of silk rope, weighs about three pounds, and can hold you, you up to three thousand. Huh? You said sixty before. Yeah. yeah, sixty foot length of silk rope. Ah. Uh, weighs about. Three pounds can hold up to 3,000 pounds. Um, if you hold one in the rope and use an action to speak the command word, the rope animates. And mm -hmm. as a bonus action, you can command the other end to move towards a destination you choose. Ooh. That end moves about 10 feet from uh, that end. Uh, that end moves 10 feet on where you are your turn, where you first commanded it, 10 feet for each of your turns until reaching its destination. Uh, up to its maximum length away or until you tell it to stop. Okay. So 10 feet of movement per turn if you're in combat or anything like that. Sure. Uh, you can also tell the rope to fasten itself securely to an object or unfasten itself to knot or unknot itself or to coil itself for carrying. Uh, if you tell the rope to knot, large knots appear in one foot intervals along the rope. While knotted, the rope shortens to a 50-foot length and gains advantage on checks made to climb it. Oh. Um, the rope has a 20 AC with 20 hit points. It regains one hit point every five minutes as long as it has at least one hit point. If the rope drops to zero hit points, it is destroyed. Ooh. Nice. Okay. Rope of climbing added to equipment. Uh, so, uh, Cody, I sent you something real quick. Okay. Uh, as for the ring, the ring is a ring of water walking. While wearing this ring, you can stand on and move across any liquid surfaces as if it were solid ground. Nice. You send it to me on Telegram? Uh, yes. 
Unless you prefer Discord. Telegram open, unfortunately. Uh, is this Want me to just use Discord oh, no, instead? It's, it's just a thing. Just open it up here. Oh, it's pretty. Uh, no, I'm not going to have you do anything for that. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there anything else the group is wanting to do? Uh, I I'm going to summon my steed again. All right. In a moment, you guys see this glorious steed that Lunaris had die in front of him reappear. I'm going to put another hex in my ring. Recharge it. Okay. Tyron, Ezra, what are you guys? Are you guys wanting to do anything? Uh, I just realized I need to figure out how I'm going to be sleeping. <laughs> well, I'm Felix is going to be taking I'm the. I'm already laying in the tent, so. Felix will be keeping night watch as he usually does. I'm trying to get comfortable next to Ezra. Wings are going everywhere. <laughs> Move your wings. Move it. It's away. How? Um, Phineas walks past, uh, the t past the tent, sort of like taps on it. Just lay on your stomach. Oh. You can technically be laying on your side. Your wing will just have to be like splayed out yeah. while doing so. Or if you're up on an upraised bed, it can just like. You know, we, drop we, off the edge. We're spooning. We're spooning. Uh, I don't want to do this. Uh, I guess it's my responsibility. Fine. Um, Just... <laughs> do we have materials that I can make, like, two really small hammocks? Felix really has quite a bit what? of cloth. <laughs> hammocks. Hammocks? <laughs> uh, Felix mean, does have I, uh, cloth. I did make a hammock in the cart, but that's for me. That's yeah, my, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my hammock. No one touches my hammock. <laughs> I don't know if maybe from spare canvas from one of the wagons that we could... As you're trying to do so, the two kobolds kind of just, like, are almost latched to you onto you at the hip, and they're just looking up at you expectantly. <laughs> I was going to see if I could make them hammocks for, and then assign them to them and be like, all right, y'all two sleep here. I think. Uh... Sure, why not? Okay. All right. As you all settle down for bed, um, Elix keeping watch over everything. Do you not need sleep anymore? He does, but he sleeps during the day while we're traveling. Gotcha. Um, the night goes on. The everyone slowly drifting off to sleep. The two kobolds in there oddly made hammocks eventually one of them jumps out and joins the other in one hammock and it's like oh. very much about <laughs> to like rip but they're not moving so it doesn't but they kind of just like cuddle up next to each other almost like as if that they've done this naturally for years uh well not years month weeks <laughs> okay. uh, um and as everyone drifts off to slumber felix you keeping watch all of a sudden, the ambiance sounds of nature around you deafen. You hear nothing. You look around, and you don't even hear the movement of your own clothes against your skin. You speak out, and nothing comes out. As you look around, you notice in the distance with your dark vision a figure garbed in ratty very tattered brown hooded cloak and robe a pale white face you see the, the mouth underneath and the nose humanoid the upper bits of the eyes and hair obscured by the hood and you hear in your head Sorry, my brain just paused for like five seconds there, <laughs> guys. It's okay. How do you pronounce your last name again? Ralon. Ralon. Uh, so, Ralon, if you would join me, if you could. 
a very deep, verbose male voice emitting as the figure 60 feet away gestures for you to follow it as he turns his back and rounds the corner of this mountain pass. Jalix hesitantly hops down from the top of the wagon, which is his usual perch, and carefully walks over. He takes a second to point at um, Lenar's horse, like, I know, don't say anything. <laughs> you try and speak, no sound comes out. The oh, will yeah. carefully approach. Okay. After a certain point, the sound returns around you. The sounds of the night air, the, the insectoids, and the sound of your own movements. You look back, and there doesn't appear to be anything outwardly different, but after a certain point of walking away from your camp, all sound returns. Mother, am I in hell? We will approach the corner where the stranger disappeared. All right. The figure is again 60 feet away. They're actually walking up the side of the mountain, that steep incline that you guys have taken down from the dragon's lair. They're moving almost effortlessly, as if they know exactly where to step, exactly where to go, almost fluid in their movement. Felix will follow. You climb up this mountain pass, and eventually you come to the mouth opening of the cave again. And meeting you at the cave entrance is the robed, hooded figure. And a small table set up with wooden chairs, and on top of the table is a small, very dirty but tried-to-be-cleaned tablecloth with two iron goblets on either side and a large pitcher in the middle. The hooded figure, now that you've gotten close enough, is very masculine, broad-shouldered, um, about maybe six foot five, one word to guess, humanoid, as he sits down. Mouth not moving, he gestures to the chair across from him, and again you hear in the head, uh, please, uh, Felix, if you would sit. Felix will look him over, look at the table, and then politely take a seat, sitting proper. As you do, he takes the, the pitcher and begins to bowl out a drink for both of you. The sweet smell of blood emitting from the goblet. Not humanoid, some sort of animal blood. As he takes the gob his own goblet, brings it up in a bit of a gesture before bringing it up to his own lips and drinking. Felix will do the same, but before he takes a drink, he will sniff it. Okay. Uh, what are you looking for? Any off scents. Okay. Since despite it being blood, it's most likely a metallic scent, but anything that would suggest there's something in it besides well, blood. Um, not going to make you roll for it. There is nothing off about this drink. It is just a cup of animal blood. Though you can't really tell what kind of animal. Felix will take a sip. I have been watching you for quite some time, Felix. For the first time, he is actually speaking. Not with telepathy, but his actual voice took me some time to uh, find you after you left Dwightswald. Been very hard to get you as an aside since you left the Octavia Manor. But here you are, finally away from that secluded place and away from the family of Octavia. Yes. He kind of gives you a small smile. His face still obscured by the hood. He has not once 
try to lift or let you see who he is. I know this may seem very sudden and very uh, suspicious, but I have been wanting to talk to you for quite some time, especially after what happened to you a few days ago. A lot of people felt a change when you did something. And I'm very, very well informed in these matters. I've got eyes and ears and my way of uh, keeping tabs on those I find interesting. And let's just say that you are one of the more interesting things out there right now in terms of our kind. Really? Never not seen myself as interesting? Well, did you know that with Vampire Spawn, in order to become a full-fetched vampire, they must be ascended by their sires? Something I've only heard of, but was not granted. It's very rare for a vampire spawn to be ascended. One's sire must very much like the individual in order to even give them the prestige. Or maybe they needed a very strong warrior still subservient to them and ascended them to full vampirehood. Usually the process takes a couple of months as the sire would allow the spawn to drink a little bit of his own blood, giving him the strength of a full vampire. However, you've taken a very different path. One that House Octavia is not very happy with. You drink the blood of another vampire. And not just any ordinary vampire either. He was a... special kind of vampire. One who... has Octavia, as well as my own kin, very much despise. However, unlike House Octavia, who take advantage of the world and its goings-ons, and without a care in the world, I keep an eye on things. And I know that this world is very much in trouble. And it needs people like you and me to make sure it doesn't burn. I see. The reason why I approach you, Felix, is because I have a request for you. I am limited on the things I am allowed to do. I cannot reveal myself, for if I did, it would cause mass hysteria and panic within all vampire clans and that could very much unstabilize a lot of things right now things that we do not want to happen which is why I must remain in the shadows but for you Felix I want you to take over Octavia I want you to become the head of that household. I want you to become a vampire lord of Aus Octavia, the only vampire lord of that family. He was suggesting House Octavia is one of the most influential and powerful. Indeed. Uh, and it'd be very difficult to do. But you are not without friends. You are not without allies. And House Octavia is very... How you say, unstable right now. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but I... Always aware. There is going to be a shift in power at that house fairly soon. 
within very much likely the year or so. Once that shift of power happens, there'll be the time you need to strike. I have people within House Octavia that will aid you. But you need to be stronger before you can do anything. Not only will this, will you be able to take care of those who have imprisoned you in this new life, but you will also free your family in turn. And I know you very much want that. Yes, but how can I believe you? But well, if you're that... just an Octavia servant, to come to test my loyalties. He rises to his feet. Shall I show you then? Immediately yes. his presence changes. If it's a familiar sensation of a higher vampire lord taking charge of the situation. Especially when the Octavia members have done it to you, but it's different. It's bigger. Larger. It's more intimidating. And it's old. Very old. His form... You know it's your mind playing tricks on you, but you you look... It looks like he has grown... Eight, nine, eleven, twelve feet tall. You imagine wings protruding from his back. You see this visage of a great bat beast in front of you, waiting to devour everything that you are. You have never felt this before. Not with House Octavia, not with any other vampires. And he's merely just standing in front of you. I, 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 Felix will be stammering over his words. The moment you start doing that, the presence recedes back to him. The overwhelming present recedes, and he's once again just a six foot five figure standing in front of you. House Octavia may have originated from me at some point or another, but. I hold no loyalties to that family. They have gone against the wishes of myself, as well as many of the other vampire clans without all the world. You need to become stronger if you wish to do this. You must consume more blood of other vampires in order to do so. More specifically, vampire lords. I have a son stationed in the Empire at Broken Chains. I know that is a destination you are going to. You must seek out my son in order to continue your evolution. I see. As Octavia has learned everything that I have done. They knew of my transformation, they knew of when I exposed the secret to my companions out of trust. He nods and pulls out his hand from underneath the robes, that, which have been obscuring. This is a very large, meaty hand. Um, you can tell just from the the veins and the brief amount of muscle you can see here, this is a fairly intimidating person calloused hands between the the lightness and paleness of his skin even calloused it looks marbled and beautiful as he brings his finger up to his mouth his fangs which have not shown this entire time you would think he was human shoot down and protrude as he pricks a small bit of his forefinger the fangs recede back up Something you've never seen a vampire able to do to hide their presence physically. A single drop of my blood will keep Octavia from keeping dabs on you. A single drop will alert them 
that you have done something, but they will not be able to track you, nor command you anymore. A single drop will put you on the path that you need to not only topple Octavia from their seats, but as well as save your family from their clutches. A single drop of my blood will forever change your life from this railroad of a trail that the Octavia family has put you on. It doesn't come without risks, but it does come with a myriad of life-changing decisions. What say you? Felix Rallon. Felix will lower his head slightly and like look from side to side, thinking, contemplating. My life is nothing but a single world. You are nothing but a chance to finally have my own destiny. To be free of the influence that made me what I am. I care about the safety of my family. If this puts them into any harm, I may not be able to do anything. Well, I can't guarantee their safety. I will do everything in my power to make sure that nothing happens to them. But such guarantees cannot be possible 100%. But you have my word that I will use all of my available resources to make sure that they don't come to harm. It is the same amount of promise that the Octavia family has also given you. Because you don't know if they will ever keep their word of keeping them safe either. See. Very well. Felix will stand up and walk towards the other vampire. He reaches down and takes the goblet he was drinking from a moment ago. There is a small pool of blood left in there. He tips his finger over and squeezes for a small drop of his own blood to drop into the goblet. He swishes it around in the opposite end. He takes his finger and licks it once, sealing the wound as he hands you the goblet. Felix will take it. I'll look at it for a moment. <laughs> Felix Lalon died a long time ago. And you were saying that Felix Octavia should rise instead. Indeed. Very well. I accept. And Felix will drink it. The moment you drink it, this connection that you've never noticed until now gets severed. A connection to your sires in Octavia, to that bloodline. You feel that they have no longer have any control, impulse control over you. That they can no longer command you to do anything against your will that they no longer can force you to do whatever they wish to do. You are free. You will no longer hear their voices in your head. You will no longer be haunted by their visions and their nightmares. You are separated from them completely and utterly. <sighs> I have much to do on my end now. As we speak, my people are making sure that your family is well looked over as a contingency in case you did decide to accept. Like I said, you must become stronger if you wish to do this. Dwight's world will keep you safe for now. Eventually, the Octavians will try to make their presence more stronger within that city. I have a feeling that they won't get very far if your group continues as they are. Head to the Empire as soon as you are done within that city of Dwight's world. Find my son, and he will continue your path of evolution. And His name? Go ahead. 
Oh, I was going to say, like, uh, out of character, I was going to ask, what was his name? My bad, Cody. <laughs> My son is a vampire lord in all of his own. Though, he is a half-breed. My son's name is Alucard. And as he says that, his body vanishes in a red mist and evaporates before your eyes. Felix will look around. Is the table and chair still there? Nope, they're gone. You still hold the goblet in your hand, though. Felix will look at it being drained like... Very well. Hello, Card. This will be an interesting night. And then Felix will head back to the camp. Alright, you head back to the camp. You notice that as you approach into camp that the soundlessness is no longer there. You can all the sounds of nature and everything, of people snoring, sleeping. The two kobolds going <laughs> is heard. Um, but yeah, everything seems normal when you uh, return back to camp. On that note, let's go ahead and go into the next day. <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Uh, let's go. <laughs> oh, uh, Cody. <clears throat> yes. Uh, the uh, thing I messaged you about, what does it take into effect the morning? Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> So you just you just stuck it in there, right? Yes. All right. So you gotta uh, speak the horse now. <laughs> Phileas, uh, mm. when you awaken in the morning, you kind of stretch yourself out and you notice that your pillowcase is a little lumpy. Huh? And as you reach in, you pull out a pair of knitted socks. Huh? Huh. So look them over. These are mine. They would fit your person perfect. Well, a little haphazardly perfect. It seems whoever was making these is still a novice in what they're doing, but they are functional. Oh. <laughs> Let me get off the, the creepy music because this is a wholesome moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> out, out creepy of like, socks. I want to go on a very <laughs> enthusiastic <laughs> walk. Creepy, uh, creepy socks. Uh, out of character, they would be uh, uh, green with white stripes, and they would have uh, FF uh, uh, on them. What is it? Italic? Embroidered. Yes, yes embroidered on them. Embroidered. Aw. It's adorable. <laughs> all right. With that being said, morning has come. You all get around for oh. the morning and uh, everything. Who wants to roll for the day's encounter? You will take a d6 uh, and you will roll it for me. Who was the last one that did it? <laughs> I don't know. I think we I, were. I think Felix was the last one. I am not doing it. Felix is immediately going to bed as soon as the sign gets up. Our vampire is EP. I'll do it. Nebi is so sleepy. <laughs> I rolled a three. Yeah. Rolled a three. Okay. Do 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 I'm just sort of like the damn thing. I'm sort of like wobbling as Hammock sways as the I am invisible, sleeping somewhat near the kobolds to keep an eye on them. Alright. Well, if this before the rest of you wake up, like, there would be a bat, like, hanging from the high rafters. Just, like, curled up. You guys are now the larger wagon, so let's go. Who's in the wagon and who's not? Dur during travels, first. right? Yes. Uh, I'm technically on the wagon. So you're driving. Beep beep. Uh, anyone else inside the wagon? Uh, I'm gonna spend some time in the wagon. Okay. Spend some time in the wagon. Felix. Uh, Felix, because he's sleeping. In bat form, up in the rafters. <laughs> up in the rafters. 
Just a random uh, bat. Ezra, where are you at? I am also in I'm in the front. I don't have your Skyrim. character piece. So go ahead and place where uh, you want to place it. It should be in your Discord. In your Discord. That I well, I don't have it actively in oh, with me sure. right now. So since oh. you actively have it, go ahead and place it on the board oh. somewhere. Oh, yeah. um, Lunaris, you're riding on your horse. Yep. I'm going to have you riding on your horse up here. Cool. Uh, one, uh, two, three, three, three. And Phileas, kind of... hmm. where are you at? I am in the wagon. In the wagon. Sort of cross-legged in my, uh... Actually, hmm. No, no, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be in the wagon. You got the two little cobalts kind of in there as well. It's very cramped. A little cramped. But workable. I think I would say they could ride on the horses if they behaved. Oh yeah, they would definitely go for that. <laughs> yeah. That means like no trying to bite or eat them. I'll help reinforce it. Alright. So the day is clear, sunny. Guys are going through the mountain pass without too much of issue. The previous wagon that you guys had to fix up, you have to you know Sit back a little bit a couple times, make a couple of repairs every now and then. But um, aside from that, really no and no problems that you've been having thus far. That is until you feel it. A rumbling in the ground beneath you as the ground begins to shift and shake. And it's only the ground that you're standing on. It's nothing from the mountains or anything. There's no avalanche happening. It's coming from underneath you as... Suddenly, these large and medium monstrosity-like creatures begin to burrow themselves up out of the ground. Uh, let me go ahead and get their images real quick. Oh. I swear Did to God, Cody, if they're purple worms. Oh, <laughs> well, they're not purple worms. That would be lovely, though. So I, <laughs> I, I, heard, I, I heard you were about to say that you were surprised about something earlier, Felix. Uh, hmm? You, you were saying something earlier about being surprised about something, and then uh, we were talking. can't believe I forgot to put these in here. I'm, I'm dumb. I'm trying to remember now. Vance, is this like, wait, is this Vance saying or Lunara saying? Oh, I'm just Felix? saying it out of character. Like, oh, okay. you, you, you were saying something, and then uh, it got cut off. I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Brangle burr. Brangle burr. burr. Kitchen it's brain not working. Guys, sorry about this. <laughs> Kitchen oh, brain dot exe has I stopped working. These guys in here already, but apparently I didn't. I'm just a dumb. I'm just a dumb cotton candy wolf. Uh, yeah, it's the best I have a question, Cody. Yes. The uh, like the first uh hour of writing. I was going to use that to put a couple more spells in my uh, ring. Do I have time for another rest before this happens? A short rest before this happens? Oh, yeah, it's a long okay. rest. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, we had a long rest, so you could get all your stuff back. Yay. Two. Three. What the hell? Four. I don't like their faces. What is that? Five. Six. That is terrifying. What is? Oh, that? that is easy. Those are snack snacks. <laughs> Those are snack snacks. <laughs> what the As right these... That's a bigger one. <laughs> oh right, long rest. Um, these chitin covered reptiles begin to burrow themselves out from underneath the ground and surround the group. I need everyone to roll initiative. Damn. Damn it. We're actually doing Whoa. combat. Oh, fans, that's hard. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you know, Earl 20 treats me terribly when it comes to rules, it seems, right now. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been so hard on my crits today. Cause... Mine to fair, are hit and miss. I, I will say, my initiative rolls have never been good. Mine's that is not true. great right now. <laughs> It, 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 trust me, it's not as bad as a mine is. Oh, I just realized that these tokens are the codes. 
<laughs> I thought those were like the monsters. The Vicks, kinda. Nope. I kind of think the Vicks. They're just like open maw like creatures. So. We're gonna lose the cobalt. No, <laughs> my pets. My Jamie pets. has a cat. I get a cobalt. Oh, Come God. on, guys. God, look Which you kept things. at home, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no Let's chance to stick at home. Oh, speaking of kobolds, three kobolds in a trench coat. Hey. <laughs> oh, hi. We need, a third. we need a third. We needed a third kobold. It's simple. Uh, we're going to cast enlarge or reduce on sun and reduce no. to make the third kobold. No. <laughs> I have respect right now. Don't take that away from me. Oh, I have, right. Sorry. I'm the good. only way you can get respect is by kobold, oh. NPC kobolds and Cody's campaign. That's the only way. Fuck me. Okay. I mean, that's Ezra's job, uh, Kyron. Yeah, we had that chance last night. He didn't take it. I, th I had wings. Oh. We were about them. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Demon Christmas. Uh, it's like uh, a second set of shoulders uh, to hold on to. <laughs> All right. Kyron, what'd you get? Seven. Ezra, what'd you get? Fourteen. Felix, what'd you get? Eight. Phileas, what'd you get? Seven. Lunaris, what'd hey. you get? One. Oh. Oh. Sisseroth, what'd you get? Fourteen. Good God, guys! Yeah, we, I, we I, didn't do I never have good initiative rolls. It's just it's just a thing for me. I only um, get a plus one. Okay, oh, remember. I'm I, opening up so son, many what's your, right what's your dex? I do have a negative two, by I'm the way. I'm assuming mine's higher, but... Huh? Uh, son and I both had a 14. Oh, you definitely have more than me. I, I was going to say. I, probably... I have 12. <laughs> also, I think uh, Sammy and uh, Rogue need a roll. I was pretty or certain I have more. Dexes, <laughs> uh, I think they both got seven. I have plus four. I also look, have look. plus four. Okay, I'm good roll, off. roll off. Roll off. Roll off. <laughs> Just go, Phileas. Just go first. 13. I'm not saying it, just go first. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so Irving. There's a lot Irving of people Nails. on this map, by the way. So it's going to take me just a second to get everything going here. <laughs> Faster. Okay, Cody. Faster, Cody. God, you're taking so long. Fuck off, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could always kill Kyron. I mean, have fun. <laughs> it's, not, it's not very hard. I'm very easy to hit because I don't have anything magic excuse me bitch you have twice the mm. hate points i do yeah hit points doesn't Wait, hit points don't mean a fucking thing if they're dealing like 30 40 things per hit hey hey, hey. Hit this, is, this is probably points. the most normal fight we've had in a while god i yeah. hope so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this music's good. What is this? You guys rolled really low in your initiative. I am very surprised. <laughs> Cody, are you surprised with me? Really? <laughs> well, <laughs> not even as a joke. I mean, to be fair, I rolled extremely low, but I still get a 14. Wow. Oh. Okay. So I was rolling for my horse. Just as like a just to see. Yeah, that's a. It did. The, I think it did the can. best. Uh, so the horse, uh, if so, um, if I'm unmounted on my horse, it gets its own turn in initiative. It got a seventeen, but it's on <laughs> my initiative because I'm riding it. It, it, did, it did roll the best out of all. It did. It somehow rolled the best, but he's he's on my turn right now because I'm mounted. Well then, unmount. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, dear God, that took forever. All right. Oh wait, no, I still got two more to put on the map. Fuck. <laughs> the DM's work is never done. DM's work <laughs> is never done. Uh, Kyron, what's your initiative modifier again? Four. Okay, good. That means one of them, one of them did as bad as I did. Right, and now I, still get I got to. Go to... Get on here, and I'm gonna go ahead and get their names going real quick. Uh, is there anything you guys wish to talk about or say as everything is getting fixed? Nope, just sleep. All I know is Ezra's 
pulling out his two rapiers. I got <laughs> that <laughs> that uh, flame tongue out. I'm ugly crying. Oh, good point. I'm probably gonna yell at the kobolds to stay put or to get safe or something. Alright. Uh, I don't need the kobolds running out and dying with one hit. Can I say the word shmeat shield? Well, they're shield? currently on the horses, so... Uh, they can do triple backflips onto the top of the... Uh, Wagon and then jump in. Are we the making circus kobolds? <laughs> <laughs> circus kobolds. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Phileas is teaching him how to read. Ezra can teach him how to be dexterous. Um, all right. <laughs> now we begin combat. So, first up is the Hive Lord here. Let's oh. see here. Hive Lord. I don't like giving him that title. Can we give him a different title? Like, I've bitchling. All right, he's just going to go ahead and move up here and use his pack tactics to fight against Lunaris here. Oh. All right, multi-attack. He's going to stab you with his frontal... Stabby stabs. Uh, with advantage because the of code. the thing. <laughs> stabby stabs. Frontal stabby stabs. Stabby stab. As opposed that to the rear stabby stabs. That is a natural 20 for the first hit. Oh my god. Mm. Uh, I'm a magnet for That is a natural 20 for the second oh, hit. No. I'm not even kidding. Silvery Jesus barbs in the Christ. first one. Alright, I'll reroll the first one. Oh, that is a Oh no. 22 to hit for the first one. 22 will miss. Alright. Alright, and the first hit is a crit, so uh cool. Um 1d10. It's a d12, not a d10. What am I doing? I'm trying to kill our paladin. Uh, this has happened twice right. to me now. You take 14 damage as one of its uh Four arms comes up and stabs you right through the plate mail, and you can feel the bit, the the hardened chitin bit, like tickle a little bit underneath your ribs as it pulls out. Um, all right, that is the Hive Lord's turn. Next is going to be number six. It's going to come up here. Boop, 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 boop. It does oh. not get uh, pack tactics, but it is going to attack Irving. Sorry, really, I didn't mean to move you. And Irving, what is your AC, my blood? Uh, that hits Irving. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then the second attack. That does not hit. Okay, so that is a D6. Max damage on the roll, so nine damage to Irving as it's... Chitness freaking forearm just goes right up into uh, Irving there. Uh, let's see here. So that is minus nine. Put him down to this. All right. Uh, next up on here is K4. K4 is this one right here. Can't get into your wagon since you guys are in a covered wagon. So this will go 5, 10, 15, 15. 20, and it's going to jump up and attack Ezra. Not Ezra, Chiron, excuse me. Brain Gober. Yep, Multi attack. Alright, so the first one, uh, that is a. Da, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Does a 24 hit? Eat ass. Second hit. Who are you giving your silvery barbs to, by the way? Uh, Ezra, he's right next to me. Right. And then an 18 hit on the second one. Uh, that also hits. You take 12 points of piercing damage as this thing rears back, jumping up oh, and thrusts uh, both of its pointed freaking frontal... Uh, I don't even know what these things are called. They're not mandibles. They're like, they're the literal legs that they used to dig through the dirt with as it lunges 
thrusts them on either side, barely missing your kidneys, and then thrusts them out. Uh, that oh, was K4. motherfucker. Now for K3. They call them diggies. Uh, this one's going to attack the kobolds. Does, does that mean I get no! opportunity attack? Because it moved out of my reach? Yeah, go ahead. Alright, cool. Uh, whack it with the flame tongue. Does a 19 hit? Uh, 19 does hit. Alright, it takes a total of 17 damage. So that including was... Including fire. 23, 17 damage. Ooh, that, that hurt it pretty good. Uh, it reels back and just goes... Ah, 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 ah. This kind of weird amalgamation of, like, no words coming out. Um, let's see here. That is a three on that, so the first one doesn't hit. That is a three on the second one. Second one doesn't hit, so misses both on the cobalt here. Uh, let's hey. call that one Egg. Egg kind of just cowardly, like, jumps to one side of the horse as it reaches up, tries to grab him with its, uh, with its two really spiky frontal pieces there. Uh, that was K3. Now for K5. Going to go to on the other side of Quilltip here and attempt to attack. Can't use pack tactics, so it's just going to get one roll. That is a 19 on the die, so that definitely does hit. Second attack. Well, plus this is that. Quilltip, what is your AC, my friend? Ah, uh, not enough. So both hit. Um, let's see here. Damage, damage, damage. <laughs> I rolled a one on both those. Okay, Quilltip takes eight points of piercing damage. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Bring him down to that. All right. After him is actually Quilltip. Quilltip is going to... Uh, shit. He's like, ah! <laughs> this is not good. Uh, that hurt really. Ma ow. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da, you can have him use his reaction. Oh, he's going to use his reaction before the enemy ends his turn. Um, to move half of his movement speed out of there to get out of there so reaction move half my movement speed so that is 5 10 15 without provoking the attack of opportunity oh, what the fuck Terrible. my bad i was trying to move the map for me yeah that's <laughs> that happens uh now that's cool tips turn he's gonna go 5 10 15 20 aim at k6 uh let's see here with his short bow. Ezra, say the line. So say the line. <laughs> Maybe. He does get his sneak attack with that. So. Are you taking your line? Say your line. <laughs> five. Nine. Eleven plus four. four Fifteen damage to K5. Or K6. Excuse me. Fifteen damage. All right. Uh, next up in the order here is Ezra. You're up. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my shell with my okay. uh, bonus action. And then if I can I get over this? You can move through uh, friendly squares. Yeah. So you're going to be going inside the wagon. No, I was going over the wagon. Oh, up and over. Yeah. Okay. As tall as the wagon. Is that doable? Uh, make well, an acrobatics check. Remember, we're top. also, like, at the front of the wagon. So we're a little bit boosted up higher. Yeah. yeah. You'll just need to make an acrobatics check just to climb on top of it. Don't get a one. Uh, well, I rolled a 20, so I think I'm doing it. Oh, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go right here and then pop right here. Jump down. All right. So it was with a silver bar. Since I already get flanking... Do, can I hold that, or is it automatically be used? Uh, I believe Silver Barb says on the next attack, don't it? Uh, yeah. All right, whatever. It'd be fine. You get All triple right. advantage. Triple advantage. Triple I'm advantage. Sneak attack. Oh, you need no. to be an elf for that. Yeah, he said the line, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs> I rolled a one. No, yeah, 23. 23 hit. hits. Roll damage. And then 13. 13 points of damage. 
pulsing damage as you bite into the hard chitin shell of these strange subterranean creatures. What else would you like to do? Uh, that is all I can do, so I'm done. All right. After Ezra is a Sussaroth. Don't, don't, it's, it's rude. It's oh, rude. Come out. He opens the door. He got on the floor. Everybody, Everybody do that dinosaur. <laughs> 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 I'm going there. Okay. Bonus action hex on K3. Okay. Uh, he now has, living longer. He has... Disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to swing the great sword at its face. I heard swing. grape sword. Yeah, it ah, grape. Um, yeah, it tastes purple. <laughs> okay. Uh, got a 20 for the first attack and that hits. a 26 on the second attack. That hits. Okay. Uh, 25 damage. 25 damage. Hey, you strike it with your great sword across it. That blade eating past the chitin army that it has it's splurting this almost acidic green blood everywhere as it in its death throes kind of goes <laughs> as it kind of just falls on its back and spider curls its legs inward on yeah. itself <laughs> as it slowly dies. Okay, I then get to use I get to move hex whenever it's moved off of a creature. So I'm going to move it to K2. Is that a bonus action or a regular action or just a free action? Just uh, it just says when yeah. Part of the spell. Hex, okay. Yeah. Where is the hex going to? Number two, you said? Yeah, K2. And it'll also mm. stay uh dexterity disadvantage. Alright. Alright. Anything else you wish to do with Sorceroth? That's it. Alright, it is now Irving's turn. Irving is going to jump off his wagon, taking out the scythe, speaking a word as this shimmering blade appears on his pole and a full scythe uh, shows up on it. Uh, he is going to tick, 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 tick. He's going to do two attacks with his weapon here. Not on a natural one, he's not. Mm. <laughs> not on a 17, he's not. He failed both attacks as the first one just barely misses while the second one he thrusts the blade down and he didn't bite into one of the soft sections of it. It bounces off the chitin as he reverberates back. Shit. Um, after his turn is going to be Felix. Uh, yeah, so Felix is asleep right now. <laughs> You, 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 yeah. you. Make a perception uh, check to wake up. Perception at disadvantage. Sure. Oh, because the door's open. Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, the light. No, no. Disadvantage because you're asleep. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, 11. 11. That's enough to start jostling you awake. This, this. Oh, he can't say anything. As many you're like... Squeaking bat squeak noises. Squeaking bat bat squeaky noises. Uh, he will drop from the rafters, and while in midflight, like the bat's body will flip, and he will transform back into regular Felix. What the fuck is going on? Being attacked. Bugs. Get out of here, Felix. Oh fuck. And that's his turn because that turning back and from bat form is an action. <laughs> oh. Bilius, you're up. Okay. Uh, time to jump into action. He is going to exit the car and try to climb onto the roof. Uh, okay. Uh, if you're just climbing, uh, go ahead and just climb check. Sure. Uh, 12 plus 1. That is 100% A-OK. -okay. Okay. 
um, climbing onto the, the roof of the, the cart. Uh, I see the big one. And mm -hmm. I think, oh shit. Uh, you know what? New, new spell time. I cast levitate on it. Okay. Uh, it needs to make a constitution 16 saving throw. Levitate, huh? All right. So I rolled a 16 on the dice. Oh, piece of piece. Damn it. Okay, well, that's my action, and unfortunately, your second level spell slot gone. Uh, we'll have to try, though. Uh, bonus action. Bonus action! I have none. Yeah. <laughs> I, I g genuinely, I don't have any bonus actions unless the cannon is out. Oh, no. Uh, so I, I need to get some bonus actions. Or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll get I'll get some more once I get, like, third level spells. But that's, like, level nine. Right. Um, <laughs> so, you know what? That's my turn. All right. After Phileas is Chiron. Hey, let's go. Get off of my wagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to hit it with the hammer. Oh no! Ah, uh, yes, the hammer. The hammer. The hammer. I miss the hammer. Oh <laughs> no! What'd you roll? I rolled the fucking. I rolled a seven plus three makes ten. Yeah, unfortunately, that does miss. These things are skittering about. They're really fast. Uh fucking a bardic inspiration then on fucking uh, uh, uh <laughs> nice. hi that's me hi that's me <laughs> all right so uh it is anything else Kyron? no all right, it is K1 and K2's turn, so K2 is going to come down here. K1 is just going to do this. Uh, no, he's going to do this. Um, K2 is going to attack with pack tactics upon Kyron. Did uh, Lenaris get a... Uh... He's already had his reaction oh, for the yeah. turn. Okay. okay. Yep. Hi, Katie. Meow. Meow! The cat is coming for attention. All right. No. Does a 19 hit on the first hit? Kyron. Yes. Second hit. Don't, don't sound so fucking like... <laughs> everything, <laughs> every, every, everything hits... This, this, isn't, this isn't Baldur's Welcome Gate. Welcome to my you life. You can't F5, F8 everything. <laughs> <laughs> so both attacks do hit. For Sammy, 15... welcome to my life. Or 15 more points of piercing damage as it stabs Ow. into you with both of them. Uh, the other one is going to go ahead and attack with pack tactics against Lunaris. Yeah, I'm not joking. That's another natural 20. That's fine. Jesus fucking Christ, Cody. <laughs> That's fine. You're, you're about to turn Chiron into a literal angel right now. <laughs> All right, so the other one definitely doesn't hit. I rolled a one and an eight on the second dice. So, yeah, that one definitely doesn't hit. But the first one okay. does. You take 14 points of piercing damage as again. Again? It, yeah. As it rips through your armor with the critical hit and you just feel it tickle the underside of your lung as you can feel the pinpoint oh. of it just barely grazing as it yanks it out. Oh, yeah. All right, yes. so, Lunaris, it is your turn, actually. Cool. All right. Uh, so the Hive Lord, mm -hmm. whacking it. All right, roll the hit. All right, Flame Tongue. Does it 18 hit? Uh, actually, let me double check. Does not. What? Bardic Inspiration. All right, roll your Bardic Inspiration to add How to it. How much is Bardic Inspiration this time, Sammy? It's a D8. A D8? All right, cool. I got an eight added to that. Wow. So all right, so that does hit. <laughs> all right, I do. Okay, I've also got to smite it at level two. All right, I'm gonna have to do some 
damage number crunching here in a second. Ooh, sorry. How much do I get for smite? Oh god. I'm, I'm a bad paladin. I don't remember how much my smite damage is. Isn't it 2d6? It's 2d8 plus. If it's second level, it's a, a 3d8. 3d8. Oh, that's juicy. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's that plus that plus that. It takes a total of thirty-four damage. All right. Takes a total of thirty-four <laughs> damage. As with your divine might, strike clear into this hive lord's body. Its hulking frame glowing brightly as the radiant energy just bites into it through a blade meeting the chitin. A couple of it, the chunks of the chitin just fly off and burst into like white fire. Uh, anything else you wish to do, Lunaris? Let us smack it again. All right. Second attack. It's a 20. 20 hits. Cool. Uh, we're going to smite at level 1 this time. All right. I'm angry at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's not so good. Man, was that a dirty 20? No, it was just a uh, normal 20. Oh, yeah, dirty 20. It was a dirty 20. Oh, a flaccid okay. 20, if oh. you will. A flash of 20. I, oh I hate gosh. it. I hate it. I hate that. <laughs> that wasn't as good as... It. That's 21 damage. Alright, that's still pretty chunky. And then uh, my horse is going to take the dodge action. Okay. Anything and, else? Uh, nope, that's it. Alright, what did you tell Biscuit and Egg to do, Sosaroth? Take cover. Take cover. Alright. 5, 10, 15, 20... 5, 10, goes inside, 15, 20. The other, so Egg literally jumped off his horse and hid behind you while Biscuit went into the cart and is hiding inside the cart. Okay. Biscuit's the smart one. Uh, meanwhile, it's the Hive Lord's turn. He's going to move to the here. He makes this screeching. <laughs> the other creatures take notice of what he is saying. Um, it's literally a language as oh. they all begin shifting their tactics. Meanwhile, the Hive Lord is opening its mouth up wide and this sickening greenish bubbling acid fires out in a 15 foot cone. So Ooh. let's see here from here. 15. So it's literally just Lunaris and the horses. <laughs> oh, these poor horses. Not the horses, I can't. <laughs> no. it's fine. The horses get a plus um, four to their saving throw that they're gonna have to make. Make a dexterity saving throw. Not fat bomb Lunaris. and bumble. <laughs> wow, that's actually not a bad dex save for me. That's not a bad dex save for my wow. horse either. Alright. So I'm glad I told the cobalt to move now. <laughs> Lunaris got a 17, and my horse got a, uh, that's 23 on his dex save. All right, you both make, so you take half damage. You and the horses take 15 points of acid damage. Um, how much HP does a horse have? A lot more than uh, that. We have... These are... I think we have to draft horses. Yeah, yeah. the stronger ones. Yeah. Uh, draft horse 5e. It's like the first thing that shows up. Uh, hit points 19. All right, so they barely hang on as the acid eats into them. Same as you, Lunaris. You, you take 15 points of acid damage. It would have been 30, but you guys saved. So, uh... It would have been melted. Oh, they would have been dead, dead. Uh, all right. After that is now K6's turn. Uh, K6 is going to continue to attack against Irving. And there's a 19 on the dice, so that definitely hits. Second attack. That uh, does not hit. So, ah, almost dropped it. Two plus your attack thing. Oh, plus that equals that. So he takes five more points of piercing damage as it goes past his armor. And is going to then start climbing up the wall. Irving does get an attack of opportunity. Which he does manage to hit with. 
Uh, Irving, let me go ahead and bring up your thing here, sir. E6 plus four. Larry, drop the dice! <laughs> oh, no. Drop that dice, don't count. That means he misses, right? <laughs> you want oh, Irving yes. to miss? Wait. Oh, shit. No. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled max damage, so 16 damage to Ooh. this thing. Nice. Oh. So that is K6. Oh, this thing is barely hanging on. Yeah, barely. As it has a climb speed of 40 feet. 5, 10, 20, 25, 30. 35, 40, as it gets up onto this ledge right here. Uh, after K6 is going to be K4, which I think is the one that's hexed, right? No, that's nope, K2. No. K4 is dead, I think? Yes. No, it's K4. right is it? below Kyra. It's in between Kyra and Ezra. Oh, there it is. Um, considering its precarious position, it is going to take the disengage action, and it's just going to go... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. As it climbs up onto the ledge up here. Uh, then is K3's turn. And that's K2. Where's K3? I think K3's dead. dead. Yeah, K3's, K3's dead. 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 Ah, K3 is dead. Okay, so we can take you off. Take you off. Next is K5. K5 is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30. And since it hasn't taken an action to attack yet, it's using the spikes on the back of it. They kind of like slowly elongate out of its chitin form as it turns its back and shoots them at Irving. Oh my god. Uh. <laughs> Let's see here. Spike. All right, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to prioritize Irving in Lunaris. I'm on still pretty decently. Uh, Irving does get hit with the spike attack. Boop. As he takes six points of piercing damage from the one spike that managed to hit. The other one glances off onto the ground. All right. Six, three. All right. After K... Five is Quilltip. Quilltip is going to take a shot at the one that Irving's been attacking. Hit. 